go on to the next slide, which we uh, where we elaborate a little bit more into each of the each of the um, zinc phosphating materials and kind of the different levels of zinc phosphate, which is more towards the steel type of part. So Pablo, do you want to just touch on the overall aspect of zinc phosphate and then touch on the micro, medium, and macro phosphates, when they can be used and maybe the advantages and disadvantages of each. And then we can follow up with just a brief uh, kind of comment of the manganese phosphate. Okay, well basically the zinc phosphate is used for, uh, as mentioned before, for steel parts, improves wear resistance and adhesion on steel components. Uh, it could be processed standalone, like I mentioned earlier, or with a coating oil. If you're just gonna apply the adhesive and you're using it for transportation purposes and avoid rust, and obviously you can you can put the organic seal that I mentioned too. That won't harm uh, the adhesion, uh, as it's a very light uh, organic seal. Uh, there are different type of phosphates. Uh, obviously, uh, components the, the the most common use for for rubber to bond, uh, rubber to metal uh, adhesive bonding is the zinc phosphate with calcium modified, and we have different crystal sizes that we could use. And the crystal size obviously will depend on the chemistry we're using and the type uh, and the time of immersion that we are submitting the parts into the bath. So the, the zinc phosphate that we call it a micro zinc phosphate has a coating weight from 200 to 400 milligrams per, per square feet and a crystal size of one to five microns. This is the most common use phosphate for bonding rubber into uh, steel surfaces. Why is that? Is because the crystal size is small and uh, the deposit is not as big. So that will create ideal situation for bonding. We also have a medium phosphate uh, that Coating weights will go from 550 to 900 milligrams per square feet, and crystal size is a little larger, 10 to 25 microns. Um, this is a little bit uh, better for other type of bond, uh, not bonding system, other type of coatings that will require a larger crystal size that you're looking to increase the film thickness on the part, and uh, will will have different properties definitely. Hmm. And then the macrophosphate, which is a fifth, uh, our, our larger crystal size and our larger deposit that goes from 1,500 to 3,000 milligrams per square feet and a crystal size from 50 to 100. Um, this, this, is for not, this is not recommended for bonding rubber into, into, into steel because the crystal size is way too big and when, when, when you're trying to debond or, or make some tests, the crystal size will break. Hmm. We also have a, in, in our Warren facility a manganese phosphate. Uh, this is a, a, a different type of chemistry and uh, it has a, a, a larger coating weight, 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams per square feet. This is an excellent uh, phosphate for wear purposes and uh, or, um, rust resistance, better than the zinc. Well, thank you. That's a that's a great overview, Pablo. So let's just touch on microphosphorus a second. So uh, a lot of in a lot of cases, our customers will do what's called a swaging process when they when they uh, finish off their bushings after bonding, and that's to really put the the part into compression because rubber does much better in compression than in tension. So they they do this swaging process to compress the rubber a bit and. In order to make sure that the micro that the phosphate doesn't break, uh, those larger crystal sizes will, will break. So that's that's really why they try to use that micro phos uh, coating weight. Correct. That's correct. And actually, we have a formulation on our on our PLC that uh, when we when we launch a project, we discuss with the customer what is going to be the the final uh, usage for that part, and if it's going to be swedge or not. Usually, uh, their swedging uh, comes from the outside to the inside, and usually it's for outer cans on a bushing that are going to be swedge. Mm. So, so when we start the project, we 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 get aware of this, and we can uh, make sure our program gets to the lower end on the 
on the coating weight, that's what we call a swedgeable phosphate. So okay. that will allow our customers with confidence to swedge uh, uh, those parts without breaking the crystals and uh, having a potential debug. Well, great. That, that, that's a really good lead-in for the next slide, which really shows the overall crystal size. So as you can see, if we were to use a macro zinc phosphate on steel and the parts needed to be swaged, you could see why those crystal sizes would break versus the smaller micro, micro zinc phosphate, uh, the crystal sizes don't break during that swaging process. But you can also see the smaller crystal size provides greater surface area for adhesive and as well as primer to stick to the, the component much better. That's, that's correct, uh, yeah. On, on the left, you can see a, a large crystal size, a picture taken on a microscope uh, from, from a, our macro zinc phosphate on a steel surface already. And then on the right, you can see the, the micro zinc phosphate, which has a smaller grain, uh, but also, as you mentioned, it has a way more surface area as they have more contact points. So that definitely will be better for bonding rubber into the metal. Great, great. So overall, in conclusion, what we try to do here today is just to show you a little bit about the different applications for, for preparing a substrate. When we talk about chemical preparation, we're really talking about zinc phosphates. And then when we're talking about mechanical, uh, we're talking about blasting or, or etching that, that metal surface or even plastic surface for that matter. Um, you can see those two different categories. And then, and then finally, the type of substrate or the type of material that's being used in the part is really critical in helping us determine what surface preparation is required. So in the case of uh, zinc phosphating, we're typically focused on steel, whereas for aluminum and plastic, we're typically focused on that mechanical abrasion, uh, such as blasting. Pablo, do you have anything else to add? Oh, well, just, uh, just one final item uh, that sometimes is missed. I think it's very important when, when we're trying to to prepare a surface, make sure we understand uh, where the part is coming from and what type of uh, lubrication or uh, rust protection it has. Uh, these systems are, are more familiar with water-based uh, components. So it's very, very important because we have cases in the past that we've been cleaning the parts with even uh, the degreasers that we have, phosphates, and then um, blasting, and then you still have some uh, bonding failures. And that it is because the, the oils or the paraffins that, that some suppliers use to put on those metals are not water soluble, and, and that definitely creates um, a, an issue. So it's really important to understand from the beginning that, that portion so we can pick the, the better process for it. If, if, if the supplier is not able to change uh, to a water soluble, we can probably find another alternative, but, but it's really important to know in, uh, in advance. Well, that, that brings up a very good point. So when we're talking about the cleaning process of the parts, we need to make sure that the part is very clean prior to doing that either chemical or mechanical uh, abrasion and, and surface increasing step. Uh, that's, that's a very good point. So thank you very much, Pablo. I appreciate your time today. And hopefully everybody's learned a little bit about surface preparation. Thank you. Thank you.